Hi, Steve Scaisebrook, and um, I'm on time on the right day, which is uh, often quite unusual for me. But anyway, let's have a little look and see what we've got for this week. And what we're looking at for your CPD is the, um, the current CPDs that are on the um, on the system on the AT-CPD website. Now, there's quite a few up there, and they are quite numerous. And I'll just quickly go through them. Um, as always, I've got a complete list of um, uh, live webinars. Um, the the one that was quite interesting for the ninth, and today is obviously not the ninth. Um, today is the fourteenth. Um, so this one will be up onto the archive by the time you probably look at it. But it was quite a good one looking at uh, BIM server center workflow. And um, it was free, of course, with a quite a good Q&A session afterwards. Um, starting today is the, um, is the Ditch the Textbook Digital Summit. Now, unfortunately, this is a USA um, timed event. So it tends to come about one o'clock in the morning for us in the uk so if you're in the states then it is a good time to, to view this because it's right into your normal day but for us in the uk and into europe then it tends to be a little late in the morning or for us um i.e one or two o'clock in the morning but given that this is going to be a belter a lot of them will be on for on facebook so you sorry facebook youtube so that you can look at the um, podcasts of this event um, after the after the time. Um, you need to register to get the updates, so please do that. Um, it gives Matt um, a really good indication of how many have actually attended, um, together with the people who are looking at it at the uh, the different times. So please go on to it. It's a really good, interesting look at the way that Google um, is into the education sector and the way that they um, are pressing ahead with quite a few really good, um, interesting um, events. Uh, Global Warming Policy Foundation. Now, this one I've, I've put up because um, it'll be interesting to listen to it. Um, I have to say that this group, I think, are deniists. They don't particularly like the idea and come up with all sorts of ideas why it shouldn't be looked at in the way that it is. I think it's important to look at what they say. Some of it is valid and you need to question it. Some of it I don't think is valid, but either way you should be looking at this and making your own minds up. My mind obviously is well made up on the idea of global warming, but it doesn't mean to say I don't look at it and um, look and see what they're saying is the answer. Going on to the 16th of December, we've got the Wessex region, CIAT's Wessex region, again coming up with this useful um, seminar on the um, uh, Elm housing and the former minister for Bristol City Council with Paul Smith, what the future of housing is in Bristol. That'll be a very interesting one. And I'd be interested to hear about it, given COVID, given the way that they are moving away from big offices. Be interesting to hear. Again, CIAT Wessex region. I've got another one listed for uh, the 6th of January, and this is the first one into the new year. And um, this will be interesting. Uh, personal growth with CVs and job advice, grow to succeed. Now, this is something that I've been looking at with my students, looking at the way that they need to apply, the lists they need to make, um, and how they present themselves to future employees. And then, of course, the 22nd of January, right at the end of the month, there is the um, Midland Members Meet. Now, I can't remember, and I haven't put it down, what they are doing on this one. But as soon as I know and I find out, I'll add it to the system. Um, I've added a couple of links into here the first one i want to mention is the open culture now this is an interesting site uh, i've been looking at this for years 
and they come up with all sorts of interesting topics to go and look at from art through to music through to general discussions a whole series of different things well worth signing up for it well worth taking the newsletter so that you keep up to date i love it it's a great one is it cpd yeah sort of general down the road middle stuff um but it's well worth doing the dbe the digital built environment um uh, register sign up for their stuff it is very very good the architects newspaper now this is a us based product and they generally charge for attending their seminars they are not bad i've been to one and i was impressed with it but whether i will pay the sort of prices that they want for it is another question but hey ho have a look and see what they're doing and um even up to the point where you look at the title and say mm, that's an interesting subject to research so go and register you never know no veg now they are a usa distributor of cad and related software and they do a lot of seminars online uh, the best one that i do attend is the vectorworks one with jonathan pickup and love him um, great guy lives in australia and um i will um I'll just listen to what he says because it's really good i'm into think tanks and i'm beginning to look at the various think tanks around the world and what they do very interesting so i'm starting to look at this and understand the power of think tanks what they do who they advise is very interesting and then the google data studio now google's into data as we all know and the way you handle data is very interesting and they've got this new site up where they're looking at this technical web webinars on youtube now youtube is a minefield of information that you really do need to understand i've got my own stuff up there and my links to other bits and pieces i've got playlists of all sorts of stuff but cops is getting interesting <coughs> they've got a webinar that's up at the moment on thermal imaging um i found it quite interesting um another one on drones um accelerate open city now every year uh 30 to 46 form students across london with a series of skills and university environment so they start to look at things and um the brief on this one's the open city and so um i go and have a look at that and see what they've got to show stanford graduate school of business now ruth porat a cpd on alphabet and google this is very good you know who alphabet is they are the owners of all the google um, sidewalk labs and everything else so um i i quite like this it's pretty good cold fusion now this is a very good site to go and have a look at it's on youtube just look up for cold fusion and look at the different presentations that he does australian but very very global Proctor Group up in Scotland. I've known Proctors for nearly 50 years and they are extremely good. Their presentations are very technical, very straight to the point and well worth the Friday morning one hour. Uh, and they often go on with questions and answers. Khan Academy, if you've got access to it, go and have a look, absolutely load up there. And of course, my own site, Scase Tech, where I put all my lectures, including the one I'm going to go through afterwards which is the um the day book or your notes uh two bit da vinci very interesting look at the market which is us bias but you know go and have a look at it uh society for the environment part of the cpd for this i think is perspective and sustainable built environment um three cpds uh, uh, three cpd courses are offered through online webinars and they're free of charge the link is up there and I well worth, well recommend you to taking a look at it. Uh, 30 years into the future. Now, this is a subject I'm going to tackle towards the end of this year. I've given um, a massive um, amount of time looking at where the future is going. So my perspective, my views, go and have a look at it. But it will be the next one on the line before the end of the year. A new guy that's come onto the block with his presentations and a guy called Matt Farrell, called Undecided with Matt Farrell. Very unique look on things, very accurate, very well presented. 
mostly tech. A lot of it is to do with energy, believe it or not. So I would really recommend you go and have a look at it. Another one that is well worth looking at is the way that Notre Dame in Paris is being rebuilt. And there are several videos out there. I've given a, one, I've got a link to one on my site, onto the AT-CPD site. Go and have a look at it. It is very interesting the way that they have remodeled it in the old style. In other words, no new stuff. It's all as it was. Very interesting. Even the construction techniques. Um, I've pulled together a list of YouTubes on old building upgrades. They vary. They vary an awful lot. But they're well worth looking at to see. CIOB. If you're a member of, of CIOB, um, go and have a look at their CIOB um, events page. Very, very good. Uh, I've been a member for since I left, since I qualified at college. So that's well before 76, maybe 74, 75 that I qualified. So go and have a look and, um, and see what they've got to offer. Um, Sipsy. Now, this is a new one that I've put up and it is extremely good. Sipsy is all about weather and energy and data. Go and have a look at it. Calculations, the lot. UK BIM Alliance, obviously, it's well worth looking at. The Green Building Store. Now, they came, as I may have mentioned many times, to the university to do a lecture, and it was packed. Very well done. Very interesting the way that they sell. I don't apologize for this. They do sell a lot of energy oriented goods. And so if you're into passive housing and anything like that, well worth getting them along or attending one of theirs. EdX, um, there are lots of university type courses worth having a look at, suggested by the Northwest region with, um, and from CIAT. Um, I've gone into this site and had a look, very good. The concrete store, always worth going to have a look at. Now, SketchUp have got what they call fireside chats. It changes, they all do different things, but they are very good. And if you're into any practice, I don't care which practice it is, I can bet you money you've got a copy of SketchUp in there one way or another. It is so useful. BSI, again, have got some very interesting lectures. Um, ICOS Science Conference. Now, this was the September the 15th to the 17th on carbon data. It was a high-level conference. Um, you need to register for it. I'm not sure. I haven't checked to see whether the, um, the lectures are up online. And of course, there are absolutely a load of different um, uh, webinars out there that I've listed. Um, all the completed stuff, in other words, this one up the top, which will um, the register for uh, the BIM Server Center workflow, are on, will be, this one will be on the archives of past webinars. And I put them all up there. So a lot of them, they're putting their YouTube videos up online. So all I've done is I've rechanged the re register and put down a recording of this event. So go and have a look at it. Of course, the usual stuff in there. Podcasts. I mean, I'm, I'm into podcasts in a major way, obviously. Um, and I got a load of new stuff. There's mine up there when listening it onto Stitcher. If you want to, you can go and look at the ones up there. And they're all listed up there already for you. Um, so that's it as far as the um, as the uh, webinars and the podcasts go. They're all up on the AT CPD website. Go and have a look, and uh, you choose your own poison. Um, let's have a quick look and look at the moleskin or your daybook or your notebook. Um, this is really a presentation that I gave to my students oh, um, some time back. And it really is all about the way that you take notes. And I've been doing this for 50 years or not. I mean, as you can see, um, I've been given Vino notebooks, anything you like notebooks, um, lined, gridded, plain. I've had them all. Um, I have my own prefaces, which you'll see in a moment. Um, I like the 21 by 13 or A5. Um, I tended to like plain paper, although I'm onto dot grid now very light in the background but living useful um i say here and i gave this presentation the last one was in 2015 
So I had a Beano book, um, which was plain paper. Um, and so, you know, I, uh, I used it. What more can I say? Um, I think it was a Christmas present. So um, the next one is what to add. Well, there just are no rules as far as I'm concerned. You make the notes you want, ideas, sketches, colour, cards, sticky notes, as you'll see in a moment, concepts, ideas. I've, I've even quite often stapled bits of paper that I found or made notes in something that I haven't got my notebook, brought it back home, stapled the notes in. Um, and receipts I have no use for. I've put them in there. Um, I've never actually gone back looking for it, but hey-ho, you never know. Um, I title each book with a start and end date, um, and just so I can keep them in some sort of linear order. Um, the book I have finished is um, just is December tw 2020, and I've just started a new one, which I will show you because it's the best one I've ever, ever had. Um, if there's a flaw with a moleskin, it's like I can never find our notes. I know I've made it, but I can't find it. It's in one of the books, but which one? Pff, who knows? Um, and also, something I'll cover later on, the damn things will never lay flat. I always have to try and hold it open or put a book onto it or whatever if I'm trying to do some artwork. They will not lay flat, and I found a way to overcome that. But um, it's, you know, it is a big problem trying to find what book I've put information into. So what I've started to do, I've, I've, I'm on to Google Keep at the moment, and I scan. Evernote, I've come and gone with that. I've found it years ago. It was great, but it's changed, and I'm not that happy with it anymore. I've still got it, but it's only because I've got information in there. The moment, my, my, my go-to method is that I use my phone, and the Adobe Scanner. Now, I've got um, a Pixel 3. So I use the um, um, Google version, um, Android uh, version of the Adobe Scanner, which is incredibly good. It saves as PDF, which means that I can OCR it. And once it's OCR, then I can search on the PDF. And that's the way that I'm finding information now. It saves into a scan folder within my Google Drive and means that I just don't lose anything anymore. Um, the Adobe Scammer app for my Pixel is um, it's very good. As I say, the best thing about it is the ease of use. You just hold it still, hold it over the object, scan it, and you get a PDF. I do my notes, my clippings, newspapers, books, anything um, that I want to keep. And then I save it. I put a decent file name onto it. But most of all, it's OCR, and I can find it. Um, here's the big one about laying flat. And because of this, I now use a spiral-bound A5 notebook that I found on, on um, Amazon. It's very good. Um, I'm going to play with it a little bit more before I offer it out as a link because I want to make sure that I'm absolutely right in my thinking on it. But at the moment, I love it. Um, it lays flat. It's A5. Um, it's got a 10, it's got a 10 millimeter dot grid, um, which means that it's light in the background and I can use it and I can scale so easily with it. It's got a plastic front cover. Okay, so I'm not keen on the plastic, but it does allow me to add my own work, artwork onto the front cover so that I can see it through the plastic covering, which means that I can change it and use it. I can rip out pages quite easily because it's spiral bound. And so I'm into this one in a big way. Now here, if you're listening to this onto the, um, the uh, Stitcher podcast or the Google podcast, I'm putting up a slide which shows three pictures of it. One is the dot matrix grid. I love it, it's great. And then the plastic cover with a scale, obviously, over the um, the page, just to show something. Uh, it's a 16 scale, so you can see the size of the paper. And the fact that you can see through it, and on the first page, I've put down who it is, the date I started it, and some hints on scale, just so that I remember. And also the fact that I am constantly jotting notes down when I haven't got my book. So I use sticky pads, and then I put the sticky pad into the notebook. Often as not, I'll put a little note onto the side of it to show why I did it or further notes about it. 
So um, I've got something there. But I love the dot matrix. It's the one now I'm going to. Um, in fact, I'm about halfway through this one, and I've already put um, a reorder onto my Amazon account for another two books. So at the end of this one, if I'm still with it, I'll set the order going, and I'll give you the link for it on Amazon. This is really is my um, my role, and I've got everything in it. A set of compasses because I do that a lot. Um, my um, felt tip pens and a set of pencils. My um, when I was doing a lot of presentation work on the screen, I got my uh, pointer. And then pencils and different types of pencils. I've got loads of them. Uh, and it rolls up. Um, I can't think of a better way of doing it. It is really good. Um, and, of course, I've got rubbers in there. I've got all sorts of bits and pieces. It changes as I want them to. So this roll that you can buy from Amazon, about 12 quid, um, takes a lot of pencils and also other sized implements that I need. Um, I'm a budding watercolor artist. I wouldn't say I'm any good at it, but I try. Um, in the days gone by, I used to do washes quite well. And I suppose that's where it comes from. If you're a new technician, then you'll probably never have to do it. But if you're older enough to remember it, then you've probably done it, where you've made up color wash drawings for the client. Um, great, I, I just love doing it. Um, all sorts of different ways of doing it. And, and I'm showing you on the screen, if you're listening to this, some examples of, of these and the way that colour does lift out a damn good detail. And so um, I use a little tiny um, watercolour paint box that I bought somewhere for about two quid. You know, it doesn't make any difference. They're just watercolours and they work very good. Photographs. Um, I take a lot of photos. The phone is unbelievably good. I have a Nikon D7500, which is also extremely good. And so I take a lot. Often as not, I forget. So what I'm doing is the moment is I'm making notes. in. If I do a lot, I take notes in my day book. In other words, the, the date I took it, the place, the conditions. And then I start to list each photograph that I've taken. So I've got a note of it. Great for surveys. Um, do I do it when I'm doing personal stuff? And well, often as not, no. But if it's a survey, it's a must. So that's it, really. I've put some references up on the under the page about Life Hacker, the monster collection of moleskin tips and tricks and hacks. It is brilliant. Uh, Daring to live fully. Um, go and have a look at that. You'll find it interesting. Of course, the Amazon with all the links that I've got, um, the moleskin um, there, and also. Um, Flickr. Now, Flickr is one of those interesting sites where it's um, I pay for an account there and I put all my better stuff up there. Go and have a look. Um, Flickr is a search for Skase and you'll you'll find me up there. Um, if you're onto this, then um, you can use. If you're onto the YouTube one, then just flick on uh, click onto Flickr. Otherwise, if you're onto the, the, the podcast, then just go and look for Flickr and then look for Skase. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, I've gone through everything that I particularly wanted to do. The show notes are up. Go and have a look at it. And the next one is going to be the next 30 years, I think. We'll have a look at see how um, things do or change. Um, we've got the benefits of 30 years' experience of the Internet now. So it's 30 years old. And so we're going to go into the next 30 years, and things are changing enormously. Um, what with um, Apple's new um, chip, um, I'm seeing great reviews of that and, and the way it's going to change things. We're going to see different things onto the Internet. Elon Musk with his um, satellites. Um, if you get go and have a look for the satellites with Elon Musk um, and look at the, the unboxings of his new system. You know, they're getting better download speeds than I'm getting in a city centre in the middle of Birmingham. So um, very interesting. My thoughts on that and the way that I think it will go in terms of um, the cloud, how that will work. And also um, this idea of hybrid cloud. I'm going to start talking about that. So don't miss the next one. It'll be the last one before the end of the year. And so um, I, um, I'm going to make it a good one. And then, um, obviously, um, 
we are going to look at some new subjects in the new year. But as always, thanks for attending. The next one will be the 21st of December. And um, as I said, it's looking to the next 30 years. That's it. Many thanks. I hope this was interesting. And um, perhaps we will meet again in the new year. I sincerely hope so. Cheers. Bye.